So the next part is the actual advertising and commercial production process. Um, the usual, as usually is the case, production companies bid for uh, ad agencies. So what ad agencies do is they have an open call for directors and production companies to pitch their work so that they can be awarded. And this includes, like I said earlier, giving the director's treatment and the uh, a budget, basically. So if they think, by they I mean the ad agency and the client thinks that this will satisfy their needs, then that is awarded to you. So here's the process. So once you're awarded, you should celebrate because um, it takes a while for you before you get uh, awarded a project. <clears throat> um, and then we begin the pre-reduction phase. I'll just outline the general of it. So first, there are three major parts in every production. Uh, it's the pre-production phase, the production phase, which is shooting, and post-production, so editing and effects. Within the pre-prod phase, there is what you call a feasibility meeting. It's important that uh, everyone involved, the crew, and also the agency and the client, understand what uh, the logistical needs it takes to do the project. And then eventually we have the pre-production meeting and this is important so that you can understand when you start shooting what, it, what the plan really is. Because most of the time spent should be spent on pre-production so that everything should be ironed out. Okay, now in production is the grind. Uh, the grind is each day you are shooting. So in my experience, probably the longest I've shot was three days which isn't really long for a lot of people, but in, in uh, the commercial aspect, it's very intensive. <clears throat> in post-production, this is probably the longest part, usually in my case. Um, so here's the, ed the edit, where you put all the footage together, what you've shot. Uh, the, v the VFX and animation, so you collect everything and you just make it pretty, make the image pretty. And then there's coloring to finalize the image and then sound mixing and mastering. Okay, I'll break it down. Oops. Sorry. Okay, um, so these are a list of things you need to worry during pre-production. Let's say the concept is ready to go. You have storyboards now. These are all the people involved in order to make your production work. <clears throat> so we have the cameras, we have the camera equipment, which includes monitors, lights, all that stuff. Uh, lenses, the crews and all the departments, uh, the talents and the actors. Here you have to worry about their schedules, what time they need to wake up, and the amount of actors. And then you have to worry about storyboarding. Usually for commercial work, there is a lot of uh, storyboarding. It's very heavy. Um, since, of course, clients and agency have a different perspective than directors since we're very visual. It's important that you communicate your vision to them as visually as you can and as specific as you can. So in storyboarding, you have to lay it all out. Uh, usually the case is um, if there is anything that deviates from the board, um, agency and the client will get very mad at me. Okay, and then other things are logistical matters, like uh, this is usually handled by the production managers. Uh, locations and vans are very important when considering shoot and other agency requirements. So here I have a, uh, a file of an old presentation board I had to present. It's what you call a pre-production organizer. See, I'll just run through it very quickly now. Um, here we have the spec, so this is where the agreed output is on. In this case, it's one 60 second video and a 30 second teaser. So this was the client, Sachi, the agency, the team. So in this case, it's the advertising objective. So we broke that down. And you see where the target market is. 
Now, during these types of meetings, uh, you show the storyboard. So this is how it usually goes. This is the agency storyboard. This is basically their rough outline of how they think the video should go. You know, as a director, you collaborate with them. So eventually, uh, once you have uh, been awarded the project, you try to your best to improve the board, the existing board, with something you could probably do better. Here, so these are the examples of boards, no? And yeah, so teaser, it's a short version lang. So here's the extended board. This is what I proposed. Just a bit more, uh, more details when you're narrating a story. And that more, so I'll run through it quickly. So in this case, um, this video is about uh, rallying people because the product here is a sangobion, which is an iron supplement. And what it's trying to communicate is that Filipinos uh, typically have anemia and therefore need to uh, take iron supplements. Our talent here was Sarah G. And we'll show you an example of the video later. Here's just the, the extended version. Okay, now here, here's an example of how I break down a, uh, the cinematography. So in this slide, you can see the, the, kind, the color palette of, uh, of how we want to execute the video. In this case, we referred to her, the film her, because of the reds. And since Sangobion had the same color palette, it would make sense to have that as a, a major color. And here, more of this. And specifically, we broke down some of the shots of the ad. This is the glass and window reference. Yeah. And certain key, uh, key elements are here also, such as the crash zoom reference, the look of the blood, and the top shot frame reference. So just to um, give you a better idea, I'm going to play the video of how that pre-production organizer I know, ended up to be. So that was the full version. Uh, I'm gonna move on naman to the, the music video, which is a supplementary material to the, but the, the 60 second version. Now see here.
Okay, so that was one of uh, one of my recent work that I considered to be my favorite. Um, it's the biggest production I've ever shot because uh, of the amount of extras that we had to shoot. So we shot in the legendary uh, El Hogar in Binondo, Manila. And uh, I guess for any commercial director, any director in the Philippines who knows of that place because of its history, it's, it's very fun to be in. And also, you feel sort of responsibility because of the, the history that it went through. Um, so what you just saw was the music video version. It's a behind-the-scenes music video lang of what we shot for uh, Sangobion. Now, um, okay, I'll go back to where we came from. Okay, so you've seen the product of the efforts of putting your work in the pre-production, the production, and the post-production phase. That was, I'll just talk more about the production part, which is the grind. So after, um, production is all about the grind. So after weeks of planning it, you finally find yourself uh, shooting what you need to shoot. So everything has been laid out, all your plans, your storyboards, you talk to your talents, your production designers, your cinematographer. So even if you think that everything is in place, there will always be a reason for it to go wrong. Murphy's Law, like they say. So it's going to fail whatever you do. So in those cases, you as a director, your responsibility is to, one, be 10 steps ahead and to preempt that these uh, problems will ha always happen. So with that said, <clears throat> your ultimate responsibility as a director, especially when working in commercials, is to uh, to problem solve. Directors, one of the main biggest skills or the most important skills what a director must have is a knack for or a skill for problem solving. And also, like in any um, job that involves a lot of people, Communicating and disseminating your information is very key. <clears throat> and uh, in the case of Sangobion, I felt like that was the that was a war zone because of the scale of we were shooting. It's not much actually, considering bigger there are other bigger shoots. But for me, that was uh, I learned a lot from it because we I learned how to handle a lot of people, and that's something that's very difficult, especially when you're a young director and you're new in the business. Okay, so I'll break down what it is to uh, work with other above-the-line professionals. Uh, when you're doing commercial, <clears throat> uh, you the perception is that you work for the agency you're working with. But I think the best work that comes out of those uh, collaborations, and I say collaboration because it really needs to be like a level thing. They, you can't, they can't treat you simply as a vendor because uh, some, peop, some agencies do that, that they, uh, they look at you as vendors. But it's important that both of you understand that uh, you're in collaboration and not simply just a machine to execute what they want. Um, in, the, in the ad industry, it's important that you as a director should appeal to the creatives. Of, a, of an agency. So that includes copyright, copywriters and creative directors and all other creatives that might be involved. <clears throat> uh, yeah. For film, uh, screenwriters are considered to be above the line. By the way, it's above the line because uh, traditionally there was a line that separated these people, the director, the producer, and the actor from the below-the-line people, which is the crew. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, the above-the-line people uh, determine sort of the budget of the whole film. OK, so when you're working with producers, in advertising, you work with a broadcast producer. And they are basically like a liaison between the production and the agency along with the client. <clears throat> Uh, executive producers are more, they perform like project managers for the production side. Um, so 
they're, they're in charge of costing it along with the producers and the other producers who might be assisting them. Uh, they're in charge of uh, scaling the project to go according to uh, the plans set out by the budget of a client and the budget of the agency. And that creatively, the needs are satisfied. And finally, the actors, because these are the highest paid, one of the highest paid people in the production. Um, and they really give you the value for every uh, production you're in. Because, you know, they're the face, so they have to look good so that for ads, they can really sell the product. And for films, they can um, help you empathize with the characters in the story. <clears throat> Okay, I think it's important also to mention the uh, working with the below the line professionals. So this is basically the entire crew. <clears throat> uh, when you're working as a director, you are leading a lot of departments with a lot of people. So with that in mind, it's very important that as a director, you sort of work as a jack of all trades. Um, you have to learn every function of every department, of every crew member, but not do it yourself. So, so that you understand what you need to tell them to get what you want, to make your vision you know, come, come to life. And with that said, it's uh, my favorite people that I like to work with are here. Because <laughs> they determine the entire look of the, and look and atmosphere of the production you're in. Whether it's a video, an ad, or a, a film, or a music video. Um, you're working with a lot of people, so import it's important to have a certain, certain, you, you build an atmosphere for your people to work in. And then I think once that's established, that's when you have a common language for you to execute the creative aspect. <clears throat> okay, finally. Uh, I'll explain a little bit about post-production. Um, so once you've shot your film, you've, you've, you've dumped every, all your footage, you're done grinding, you assemble the cut. <clears throat> this is uh, the ed editorial aspect. There's the offline cut, which is the assembly lang of all the images, and the um, online edit, which is where you include the graphics, the VFX, the motion design, the color, and uh, the principle here is it's, it should be designed very well. Um, a lot of the work, um, all three stages have different kinds of work, but I think where you can shine is uh, creatively, at least visually, since you're seeing all of this on a screen, nah, it's not anymore in a location. Um, this is where you can really toy with your creativity in post-production. That's what I think. Uh, and then finally, once the image is done, you have to lock in the image with the picture, of course. So in some cases, you will need a musical score. Uh, there are certain projects where you are, you can suggest a, a kind of sound, but traditionally, the, the, the broadcast producer is in charge of doing, doing that. They choose a the song for you, especially on, on a TVC. Um, in some cases, for, it, for instance, in digital ads, uh, you have more liberty. You're, you can choose your own composer to design the sound of your, uh, of your video. And I think in those cases, when you work with composers, um, you sort of become a member of the band, so to speak, just because you can throw around ideas and really find ways to milk the output. And then finally, there's the sound mixing and mastering, just to, just to clean everything out, just to make sure that all the sound comes out the way you want to. Okay, I'm gonna skip these. Yeah, I think we can... Pleasant afternoon to us. And of course, a pleasant afternoon to you as well, Sir Jorel. So I have here five questions coming from our viewers, live stream viewers. And the first question is from Yasmin Agustin. 
Uh, where do you make your storyboard? Where do I make my storyboard? Um, usually for my own, when I start making a storyboard, I refer to photos of uh, past work by other people. Like I lift images from from films or other ads that I really enjoy, and <clears throat> which I think will fit, for example, uh, the concept of an ad I'm making. So I, I lift images, that's what I do first. And that's what you call a photo board. But then when you make a storyboard, I can't draw myself. So I usually uh, either one, use an app on the iPad to help me storyboard just to like understand where I want the actor's block and the light to hit. But uh, for more extreme cases, the more difficult ones, uh, we usually hire storyboard artists. Um, since basically your job to them is to just explain what you want. And then if you like it, you communicate that. And uh, hopefully they understand what you're seeing as well. And that's, when you, that's how you make the storyboard. So second question. Dominic Bolo and he asks, uh, paano sila nagde-direct sa isang talent na walang background sa acting? Paano mo mapapaarte ng isang talent na walang acting experience? Lugi nga. Um, kapag ganun, usually. Uh, I've started kasi with directing my friends. So it's easy to understand na even if they don't have extensive knowledge or experience in the craft of acting, madaling you just tell them really how to behave on camera. That's, that's how directing is. It's to be in their space, to understand their space, but also understand that there's how they behave in front of a camera in that space. Parang ganun. Tama ba? That gets me. Sinabi ko. Third one is from Ethan Vistal, and he asks, in an industry that everything you make has to make a profit and an impact. How do you formulate a plan to achieve both? Hmm. Well, since we are sort of, uh, we come late in that process, in the business process. So like, like I showed you earlier, no? Wait, I'll go back to it. The production company comes last, but that doesn't mean that we are the least. So, to answer your question, um, usually agency sort of translates what the client wants. So since the client eventually, at the end of the day, wants to make a profit with their product, the marketing and the advertising agency is responsible for translating that into how the audience can uh, sort of interact with the output. Ganun. So, oh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Can you repeat the question? In an industry that everything you make has, has to make a profit and an impact, how do you formulate a plan to achieve both? Well, and then for, as on the production side, no, um, you just re do a really good job. Because since you're working with other people who understand the business more, and you're, that's why they choose you to work with them because they think that you also understand the business so that you can translate that as visually as possible to achieve what they want to communicate. Yeah. So from Fatima Being a director, your dream since then? I have, I've always been into the arts, music. I can't play an instrument though, but I've always been attracted to it and eventually I learned how to design so my entry into it was graphic design and then I found and then I found the camera because I like I like motion eh? like I like seeing things on a screen and seeing how things behave on on camera so since then I think I thought that I was pretty good at it so I decided no okay I think this could this could be a viable career option and so yeah, I guess uh, since then, at that point, I only wanted to do this for the rest of my life.
<laughs> so from our lab sir do you have any questions okay so uh, please stay tuned as we will be having a short commercial break and after that uh, mr jarl will continue his discussion and if you haven't got the chance to ask any questions uh, don't worry as we will be having more q a afterwards I think the best and most effective way of communicating a story, telling stories. Hi, so I'll continue lang um, the talk with uh, showing you more of my past work. So this is the sea oil. Sea oil, um, this was done in January. Um, this is the 30 second version. And uh, this is one of, this is also quite logistically difficult because we were shooting cars. And it was my first time to ever try to shoot anything on a, on a crane. So it was a car, it was a truck. That was my cringe as a record. And it was exciting because that's the first time I felt like an, an action movie director. So I think the rush of doing it is very exciting. Okay. okay, that's one. Um, that was 30 seconds though. Tapos, when you're doing a commercial worth 30 seconds, uh, each frame really counts. So, in the making of this video, um, we really had the time each segment. And it was my first time doing it, so I'm used to sh longer form styles. So, where, where you can actually sort of have a story. But, but in the case of ads, it's, it's not really story-based, but more of a design-based thing. So you have to really understand how the information on the screen is conveyed. So parang kailangan ma-optimize ma mo yung bout frame. And you can, uh, I think we only had about a total of 20 frames, or maybe less, a bit less, in the, entire, in the video. So it just goes to show you that with a difficult you know, it's just 30 seconds. You, we shot for two days for this. And to, to know that only a few moments of your shoot were only on the video really counts a lot. Tapos, it just makes you want to make every image as beautiful as possible, or as, rather as impactful as possible. Uh, this video naman is more, it's a, it's a longer video. It's for a... Uh, it's for Globe when they had their yearly tattoo awards, what they call it. So it's about 10 people who made difference in, in the Philippines with uh, social media.
That was a more uh, longer form type of video, which I prefer working in because um, in that case, parang you can tell a story, so you can sort of flesh out the characters more. Tsaka, you really pay attention to the to the audio and the visuals when you're given a certain amount of time. There's a sweet spot eh, between, for me, I prefer making work between one, one minute 30 to two, because beyond that, I think people just tune out, don't pay attention anymore. Um, okay, here's another one. This is for Coke. I was lucky enough to work with uh, Al Dub for this. I was my experience with them was very perfect. nila yun lang. They work very fast and their chemistry is really amazing. So in this case, in, uh, this type of format is a bit more hard sell where you're clearly selling something. And um, I guess I've realized at this point that I've done a lot of different types of work from the digital to TVCs to more short, to short films. And uh, it's, it, it's important to have a range then of different um, uh, types and formats because I guess as a director, especially with new media, there's all different types of formats and, and uh, styles. It's important to have range so that you can understand um, different types of audiences also so that uh, when you make something, you really have to consider what you will enjoy as an audience member. So that range uh, sort of colors lang your ability to communicate something on a mass scale and here's uh, the, another one so this is part of a series though I'm just showing you two of four but I, these are I think my favorite because they're very simple <laughs> 